Good morning. <coughs> oh dear dear. O two twenty five. We're just leaving junction twenty nine. Truck stop. Done all my checks. Everything's where it should be. Trucks parked around here, look. <coughs> Quite a few. I'd fold my mirrors in if I parked around here, though. <laughs> well, at least a bit closer to the kerb. end of the truck stop here. Yeah. Didn't notice if the gate was After open. After 600 or not. feet, turn left, Harbour View Road, then go <coughs> right on the roundabout and take the third exit, a 6,175. So the plan. The only plan I've got so far is to get to Southampton and refuel. After that, it's a bit in the lap of the gods. I'm supposed to be going to, I think he said Felton. Right on the roundabout and take the third exit. I've got nothing on the old machine here, so um, there's no jobs planned in. So I guess it depends on what time I get there. I only took a nine off last night, I'm not generous. I'm out, I'm happy to do a nine off. If I'm back in the yard, no. 10 11. They're not going to pay me. So, uh... Alright, so we're going to hot foot it on down. Doesn't look like any of the roads are shut. Any of the motorways or the A34, so that's good. I thought that garage was 24 hours. No. <coughs> so, usual trip back down south. then it'll be a trip on the docks as, as it stands if everything goes to what he said it was onto the docks get this box off <laughs> and how long is that going to take yeah, who knows it doesn't look foggy at the moment but that doesn't mean it's not foggy down in Southampton <coughs> so you know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it and then it's uh, an empty the lift after half a mile out of uh, my favourite container yard how long is that going to take who knows so we've got roadworks in Totten to contend with at that time in the morning. It's so all we'll added time onto the day. And my card went in a couple of minutes after two o'clock, so uh, we'll see what happens. I've 
I've always say, you can only do what you can do, can't you? Quite a nice stick though. I did wake up quite a few times. I've got this, I've got a theory. Oh, what's going on here? The fifth exit, M1, towards the south. Okay. Well, the M1 north shut. Both those junctions are shut. Oh, I'd have been in. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's not shut down here, is it? Don't think so. I'll get over it. It's not shut, take is it? the exit, M1, then take the motor way. Oh, how lucky was that? Whoa! Oh, that would have been um. <laughs> that would have been interesting. Because I think that if I was if I'm from M1 towards Nottingham for 77 miles. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if the road that I normally take up the road I took yesterday was shut or not. Oh my word. M1 North definitely was, and then the other one before it was. Salt is ready, but it's 4 degrees. He got his fog light, no, he's turned it off. Well done, my man. Yeah, snotty. Yeah, I've got, this, I've got a theory. Certain types of food make you pee more. Well, when you've got a prostate problem like I have, well, it's not a problem, it's just in, it's in, it's enlarged. So I take medication for it. But it means you've got to get up during the night and go for a pee. And this medication helps it. So, um, I've discovered that certain type, and I have read this, that certain types of food plays up your prostate. Spicy food is one of them, but red meat is as well. And I had quite a bit of red meat yesterday, and uh, yeah, I was up twice last night, which is very unusual for me.
if only you um there's a there's a well, I can't even talk it's that early in the morning um people often say oh I wish I'd looked after myself a bit better in the early days well yeah I mean there is there is that isn't there but you know on equal measures I know I know someone I used to work with a bloke back a few years ago but he was a fair bit older than me and uh, he was into his triathlons you know he did triathlons and marathons and you know all this malarkey you know, I used to go out running at lunchtime everyone else would be tucking into their dinner he'd be off for a half mile jog lunatic and he'd run into work and run home again it's like whoa yeah, I think he died at 52 from heart attack. You know, it's, it's you just don't. That's all very well saying, yeah, look after yourself, but you know, I'm not saying that all that fitness and malarkey killed him off, but you know, you never know. I think is the word is, that is what I'm trying to say. You can do all the precautions you like, deny yourself all that lovely food and drink good times and staying up until four o'clock in the morning talking shite like I've done often over the years and then um for what <clears throat> well, I need to be in bed by nine so I can get a good eight eight, eight nine hours sleep because it's good for me. Oh well, yeah as long as you don't die of fucking cancer then I bet you'd wish you'd been out partying a bit more you know, it's like, yeah, it's a fine line, isn't it? And we each have to tread our own courses, you know, but it's, it makes you wonder sometimes. It really makes you wonder. We all got to go sometime. Now, I'm losing weight in a bit at the moment. Those of you that don't know, and I've lost nearly a stone now. I'm a pound off a stone since I started in December. So, so I went to see the doctor and said, I think I'm dying. I was, you know, I was, you know, I, 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 I realised that I wasn't feeling good. Oh, look, fog. That's not good. So, uh, yeah, I went to see the doctor to see what, and I, I was diagnosed with high, high blood pressure. Give me a load of tablets and um, sort it out. I'm all right now. And I must say, I feel a million times better for it. Because I was feeling like shit. Thank you. 
man on the hill. Yeah, you're going to, innit? Nobber. Oh, what are you all about? Why have you slowed down? Come on, man. 45. Stay 
can stay, you can stay with me until the street lights run out. Valentine's night then. I, I don't need to know the details, right? But you know, that, that's, that's too far, it's too much, too much information. But did you take your other half out for dinner? Did they take you out? Did you not bother? You know, it can be a lonely old time of year, really, can it? You know. I had, a bit, I had a story nearly tipped me over the edge yesterday. Oh my god. They were talking, they were listening on the radio, and it was a. It was a. It was a. It was a daughter saying about her mum and dad. They'd been married for something like 59 years, I think, they'd been married. And, um, The mum recently. The, the dad. Her dad died. And then her mum recently died. But for the 59, they died, I think they must have died fairly close together. And they often say that, don't know, you can die of a broken arm. And um, for 59 years, he made her a Valentine's card. And wrote the old poem, you know, wrote the old verse in it himself. And always, you know, he's always put a personal thing. You know, one of the last minute dash to Tesco's to buy a card for one time. It was just, you know, it was a... <laughs> You know, a bit more thought went into it. <laughs> and, uh, But, uh, yeah, she, she died. And so she had 59 Valentine's cards. So, um, and she treasured them. She kept every single one of them. So, when, when she died, the, the daughter took the cards and put them in the coffin with her. Oh dear, you set me off, Nanny. Old romantic that I am. But it can be a lonely time of year, you know, if you you know, if 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 your if your wife or your husband's passed away and it's just you know. I suppose you've just got to look back on the happy times. Or not so happy times, depending on what your relationship is like. <laughs> you know. But you know, there's always good summer in there. Or if you're single, and you haven't got anyone, or did you, you know, did you take a chance and tell someone how you felt about it? Wow, that, that's scary, isn't it? Have you done that? Taking the fear of opening your heart up and then, then going, they were saying about that as well, about this, <coughs> it was a restaurateur. They were talking about, you know, what happens on Valentine's Day. He said, yeah, we do specials and everything for the week. They were, talk they were talking about the, you know, as a Valentine's special. So they were talking all about Valentine's Day. So yeah, we do special meals and all the rest of it. It's got a few pinky flat, pinky hearts, and all that, my bed hearts, and all that, my you know. And um, he said, yeah, yeah. We said, um, we often get, you know, we get, you know, like the people proposing on the day. And he said, oh, yeah, it all goes well. And he said, well, you know, we're all there ready with champagne and party poppers and sparkles and stuff. And every now and again, one of you know, the woman says no. <laughs> or, the, or the, you know, one of the partners says no. It's like there's this like hushed silence. Everyone in the, everyone, because you know you draw attention to yourself if you get down on one knee, don't you? In the middle of a busy restaurant on Valentine's night, everyone's going yeah, we're yeah, cheering you on, and the girl goes no. I don't think so, Fred. Like, uh, where'd you go from there? It's like, and then they said they all slumped back in the kitchen that way. <laughs> oh, imagine, just I, I, I can't even begin to imagine how that must feel from the bloke's point of view. If it is a bloke, it might be the other way around, it might be the girl proposing to the bloke. Might need to be in that lane now, stay right. Stay where you are. Stand still, that man. <laughs> that reminds me of a story. I don't know if I told you. 
It's just nothing to do with Valentine's Day. When I was in Germany, we had done. Um, we were based up in Osnabrück. But the regiment was based down in Wildenhof, which is a fair old drive away, you know? It's a good, good few hours. So well, my squadron was totally detached from everybody else. It was, it was a fragmented regiment, actually. We had <coughs> detachments and squadrons all over the place. Uh, and troops in different places as well. So, because in those days, we supplied, we supplied air support. That has all gone out the window now. Now, now we don't have any Harriers um, supplied air support for the Harrier Force in Germany. And uh, that's all gone out the window. Now they're into my old regiment is in the electronic warfare. So all the sneaky beakers now. So anyway, digressing. We used to, um, every, every now and again they used to get the regiment together. Now, we were under strict instructions not to drink on it. You know, you put, you put a load of squaddies in the back of a four-ton truck or on a coach or a bus or whatever they used to cart us down in, which is various different modes of transport depending on the weather and what they had available. And make you sit still for four hours, what are they gonna do? Yeah, drink. So it was always under strict strict instructions not to drink on the way down. Yeah right. That never that never worked. <clears throat> and it was almost like it was encouraged. Until this one time. And we went down for the boxing, there was an inter squadron boxing, and um, our squadron had a quite a good boxing team. <clears throat> we had some good boxers. And uh, we went down for the boxing, oh my god. Instant slowdown. We just caused riots and mayhem. RSM's bike got stolen up on stop of RHQ. It was just carnage down there. It was you know. so the next day after the boxing where we won incidentally <clears throat> we um all out on the parade the next morning. We were over one. Sergeant Majors, regimental Sergeant Majors going absolutely mental. Everyone is absolutely, including the, the senior ranks, absolutely hanging. Absolutely wrecked. But we had a, we were unfortunate enough to have a regimental Sergeant Major who couldn't quite pronounce his R's. Now people think I'm making this up when I tell it, but I'm not. I, I kid you not. So, when he used to say, like, when he used to bring the regiment to come up to attention, he'd go, regiment, regiment shouldn't. So he'd go, regiment, regiment shouldn't. And he had a bit of a, not a squeaky voice, but it, was, it wasn't like, like a barky voice. So of course it started to tipper and often you know, it was starting to... I'd never heard it before. A52 is closed after A606, that's alright, not a problem. Now we're coming down to a 40 now, what was happening here? We've got to slow that in. No, anyway. Don't go flying by me, mate, there's cameras here, you some sort of cock. Yeah, obviously. Don't we get a flash? Anyway, he dismissed the other squadrons, apart from our squadron. So there's about 150 odd blokes all stood there, absolutely hanging. And of course, one of the lads at the back was starting to sway about a bit. You know, he'd been he'd been stood up for about an hour, been marched around a bit, and uh, he was starting to sway. 
So of course he noticed this being eagle eyed Reggie Wilkes on major and, and, and shouted out that man in the wheel wank stand still <laughs> they just 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 set everyone off there was there was people openly laughing and one thing you don't do is laugh at your red is laughing at your RSM you know you just don't do it you know, unless you want to die but of course we were all pissed still and found it highly highly amusing when someone says that man in the wheel wank stand still and then he came out with what's that man's name what's that man's name and then someone goes Roger that <laughs> <laughs> just about finished us all off he just, just couldn't contain it what's going on there was nothing here so um Nothing going on. Well done, Highways Agency. Cheers for that. I enjoyed that immensely. So, you can imagine, you could imagine the uproar. He had us doubling around, there was people puking up, fainting. <laughs> My two staffy, oh, Ken, Ken Cairns, what a brilliant bloke he was. <clears throat> He come to he come to our squadron with the, with the with the intentions of finishing off his career. He'd done 22 years, and he thought that our our Garrett Tuesman was a cushy posting. How wrong he was! How wrong he was! He had a like a troop full of renegades that he had to try and control somehow, and he couldn't. No one, and that's why the squadron was disbanded at the end of the day. Um, there was inquiries. There was there was all sorts of. We had one of our lads die from alcoholic, um, from uh, he choked on his vomit on the way home. It was, it was, it was, it was out of hand. It uh, made the sun, it made, made the papers. How bad it was! Oh, um, they made it out to be worse than it was. But you know, you know when you, you know, you got to remember that <clears throat> if you. Al alcohol was a big problem then. Alcohol was a big problem. And it, because it was so cheap, we worked out one night. Me and my mate Diggers, who I'm still in touch with, lives in Margate, nice man. We worked out one night that if you went and bought hired out a video for the night, bought a big bottle of Fanta and a big packet of crisps to eat, it comes to around 10 Deutschmarks. Between 8 and 10 Deutschmarks, depending on what snacks you bought, you know? So, um, that's you staying sober all night. Ten Deutsche bucks, which is, which was about two, two, two pound forty, two pound fifty, something like that. Two pound fifty, which isn't a lot, granted, you know. Two pound fifty. Now there was four marks to the pound when I first got to Germany, just under. Marks to the pound, so a mark was worth roughly 25 pence. That's the way to look at it, it was the easy way to work out. One mark, 25 pence. Guess how much a pint was? A bottle of Grolsch or a bottle of Earthing? <coughs> or a can of tennis? Yeah, one mark, 25 pence. So to stay sober would cost you between eight and ten marks. But a bit about watching one video for the night. Or you could go down to the bar and get, and get totally bluted for ten marks, which was two pound fifty. When you're eighteen, which one are you gonna do? You know, oh I think I'll have a night in the night and watch and watch um, Beverly Hill Cop. It's a no-brainer, isn't it? When you're 18, you're looking for fun and adventure, and having a laugh, and generally being a bit carefree and a bit mad. So yeah, no. it was all a bit mad. Mad times. It was mad times. 
and it didn't help that the squadron was full of lunatics. It was like the dumping ground for... I don't know, we, we had two or three people that had just come out of prison, come back, got cultures to jail, come back, come back to two squadron, got sent to two squadron. No loons. I was 17 and a half when I got there, easily, e easily impressed. fun we had, I'll tell you, it was, it was an eye-opener, it was an eye-opener. And that moulded me into the sort of person I am today. <laughs> I don't drink, I can't drink like I used to though, God, my word. I can, I can stack it away when I need to, when I want, when I need to, when I want to, you know, don't, but I do, I suffer. God, do I suffer these days, you know. I did the Army Navy rugby about I've, I've done about four or five of them. They've started getting a bit a bit safe, you know. <clears throat> it's a bloody expensive day out to be honest with you. It's an expensive weekend. <clears throat> you don't see much change out of six, seven hundred quid for the weekend, it's you know, it's a it's, Just, it's just a, it's just a drinking fest, and it's good fun. You know, and, uh, I can't remember. It's 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 squaddies and matlows, and it's everything's good natured. But there's a lot of there's a lot of drink involved because that was the culture back then. I, I I would suspect that in the next 20 years that will change because there isn't that culture in the services anymore. Well, very unlikely because it's been sort of drummed out of them. All the fun's gone. So, um, yeah, things have changed somewhat. I'm going to have to get by this guy, he's ended up just doing 50. So, I don't know where I was going with any of that. I don't even know I ended up starting talking about it. One thing I'm talking about for, the next thing I'm talking about. Bad old days. Then close your head. I need to be over here anyway. He's got a lawyer. So, so that's good. It's down in one lane. on that. 
knows? Has the speed limit changed again now then? We've gone back to 50. served then from I don't mean like like served on tables served in the forces I know there's a few of you or you've got sons or daughters that are serving a uh, few of you got that as well don't forget RAF done count that you know that, that's what's you know, we don't include them only joking Which is why you probably listened in the first place, so it might be a good video for you, you boys and girls. I've waffled on, I've killed 45 minutes of my journey, which um, everyone's a winner. Chicken dinner. Oh yeah, Valentine's, how did we, how did we, we, we sort of veered off that subject? Right, come on, what did you do? South in the gorgeous gear, it did nothing because I was in a truck, I was in Junction 29 truck stop at the M1 near Chesterfield. And the gorgeous gear was down in the New Forest, so um, yeah. We message each other throughout the day. I always send a message, as soon as I wake up in the morning, first thing I'll do is send a message saying, Good morning, gorgeous wife. I don't wake her up because she sleeps like the dead. And I don't think she has notifications on anyway, she has a good sign on her. So even if I was dying and I needed to get hold of her, she wouldn't hear. Um, I always send her a message first thing in the morning, that way she knows I'm alive. I'm dying in the camp. So, um, then um, get the old message throughout the day. Well, we always speak every day. We always have a good chat. Always. And I look forward to that. It's a bit of human interaction. That's as we can all just give us. So.
did say that uh, we weren't, we weren't going to do presents. You know, there's no, we don't do flowers or anything like that, or chocolates or that malarkey. Because it's, it's, you know, it's just, uh, I'll buy flowers every now and again. You can't do it too often, otherwise, you know, just don't work. Every now and again, I'll buy a bunch, a bunch of flowers. A sensible price, but I do, I do, I do get young. And normally you can buy a bunch of roses saved for a tenner, and then at Valentine's Day they're 30 quid. It's like, hang on, they're the same roses. Yesterday they were 10 quid, today they're 30. What's going on apart from you lying in your pockets? Yeah, I don't agree with that. Definitely have buffered on along enough now. I'll switch you some later on. 